I had saw a doctor that said, there is nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. The headaches that I'm getting, the pain that I'm getting, the, the balance issues, it was all in my head. I was diagnosed June of 16. So now it's at least it's a name to something that's going on. I was looking to get back to work and thinking that getting on medication would help me um, and life would get back to normal, which didn't happen at all. Many of my symptoms were visible, but then I also had invisible symptoms. Um, the invisible symptoms were more so in, in terms of my emotional well-being as well as the pain that I was feeling. MS is not just a disease of strength and balance and vision. It's also a disease of intellect and of mood. Someone who's depressed might also put a mask over their feelings and not divulge how they're feeling. Patients feel uncomfortable admitting at times to mental distress or depression. They're worried about a label that might be attached. And that becomes a very significant barrier to the detection of the symptoms and also for the treatment. Depression is, is sadness, but it could also be irritability. And sometimes you get a combination of the two. So a loved one starts noticing a change in the person's behavior. They become a bit more short-tempered or a bit snappy. They do things that are out of keeping with their usual character. You might be sleeping badly, your appetite changes. You can lose your sexual drive. If depression becomes more severe, you have thoughts of self-harm. So you're really looking at a syndrome that is, very, that is very significant, that can determine all aspects of a person's life. I started fighting with my husband without no reason. Last year was really bad. I would get really upset when it was four o'clock in the winter and it was dark and I was alone and he would come up home and I would just explode without no reason. We were having really bad fights until I had to tell him, you know, I think this is what's going on and I can't control it and this is not going right. Depression you know, has a wide ranging effect on the person with MS. It has been found to affect quality of life and family members as well as the person with MS. It is associated with poor performance at work. It's also associated with not wanting to take one's disease-modifying medicines because when one is severely depressed, one just doesn't care anymore. We know that it is highly likely that some of the mood disorders, particularly depression, are caused by living with an unpredictable uh, disorder that can exacerbate, remit, progress, and there is a great deal of uncertainty that the person with MS has to adjust to uh, in living with this disease. I used to be very good at multitasking. I take as many problems and load them onto me, and I'll prioritize them and task them and, and solve it. And this disease has changed a lot of that capability of control and emotions to just do a lot of that. For instance, it could frustrate me in the morning when I'm trying to get my kids ready for school. The dogs run around the house, maybe bark and want to go outside. The kids aren't listening. I'm, I'm trying to do a lot of things at once, and it frustrates me. I feel like his, his fuse is just a little shorter. Sometimes something will just set him off, and he's quick to, to get angry, but then he's been better at recognizing it. And I think part of it was we had a conversation just being honest with him and saying like, do you recognize that you're kind of being very snippy or you know that you're irritable, like what's going on? And then doing research and then showing him like this is something normal that people with MS can go through. Since depression seems to occur more highly in MS than in other neurological disorders, it is likely that there are characteristics of the disease itself that also contribute to causing mood disorders in MS. There are several hypotheses about this. Mood disorders such as depression have been correlated with changes on MRI of the brain in certain areas of the brain, particularly the temporal lobe of the brain. In addition, uh, inflammatory events can also trigger depression in persons with MS. So there may be aspects of the disease itself that also contribute a great deal to the prevalence of these disorders. It was thought earlier on that the interferons could precipitate and cause depressive episodes in MS. Subsequent research has not found that that clearly is taking place. As my symptoms started to change, it made me wonder in terms of what my journey of MS is going to be like. So in the beginning when I had mobility issues, 
immediately I was thinking, okay, will I ever be able to walk again? Will I ever be able to go to work again? Things like that. And it made me start thinking about what's my future's gonna be like. And I, I call it being in a particular place. And I found myself creeping into that place. And one day it was just a matter of, I can't come out, I can't go out because just things are difficult. And then it became, I don't want to go out. And one day became many days, became many weeks of just not wanting to go out. Another disorder of mood that occurs in multiple sclerosis are anxiety disorders. We do have a number of research studies that have demonstrated that clinically significant levels of anxiety, that is a level of anxiety that will kind of cause the person a great deal of distress and impair their functioning is highly prevalent in MS. And I guess it's no surprise that MS could precipitate anxiety. It's an uncertain, unpredictable disease, and the person has to deal with things that they've never had to deal with before. I'm not someone that I feel has a lot of anxiety or ever felt like I had a lot of stress, but yet my body has so much anxiety at times. I feel like I'm missing something. Something's going on or forgetting something. And your whole body is just, it feels like it's moving inside very fast. It's a lot of anxiety. If a person with MS is anxious and feels kind of very upset and is ruminating over and over again about things that could go wrong in their heads or have gone wrong, they're probably experiencing clinically elevated levels of anxiety and should talk to their healthcare provider about it. Multiple sclerosis is associated with an increased risk for bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a type of depression that is associated with manic episodes or mania, which is a hyperactive state in which one can't think clearly and one thinks very, very quickly and one gets impulsive and uses bad judgment. One of the other behavioral changes that you can see in multiple sclerosis is pseudobulba affect. And this refers to patients who cry when they don't feel sad, or they laugh when they don't feel happy, or you can have a mixture of the two. And the important point is that it's involuntary. Evidence suggests that this might affect up to 10% of MS patients to varying degrees of severity. It appears to be more closely associated with progressive forms of multiple sclerosis. The good news about pseudobulba affect is that it does respond very well to treatment. It's very important for persons with MS to get treated for changes in mood, severe changes in mood, because severe changes in mood, such as a major depression, will affect their functioning. The good news about depression in MS, though, is that we know that it can be treated successfully. When my doctor said the D word, <laughs> depression, you know, being a support leader, I could see it in everybody else. But I didn't even see it in me. <laughs> While there are clear benefits to support groups, support by itself is not going to be able to successfully treat someone with a major depressive disorder. Then you really have to look to the medication or the cognitive behavior therapy. And then of course you can bring in support in addition to that. When my doctor first um, talked about the idea of medication, um, I'll be honest, I was a little bit resistant. My doctor gave me something, as she put it, just to take the edge off. and. It worked. You know, it wasn't one of those things where it worked just like that. No, no, it wasn't a quick fix. Um, but I noticed that in time, in days, a couple of days, I would say, I didn't want to stay in bed as long. I wanted to go out, maybe take a walk. Things that I like to do, I wanted to do again. I wanted to hang out with my friends again. And then it got to a place where you couldn't keep me in the house. <laughs> All I wanted to do was be out in the world again. There have been a number of treatment studies to date that have demonstrated that pharmacotherapy, antidepressant therapy, and psychotherapy has been found to be effective in ameliorating the symptoms of depression and MS. There has been one randomized clinical trial that treated both depression and anxiety in MS and found through a type of psychotherapy called cognitive behavioral psychotherapy that anxiety can be very well treated in persons with multiple sclerosis. There's been times I noticed that physically he hasn't been feeling as great and getting a little stressed at times. And I said, well, you haven't been to yoga. Maybe you need to 
get back into that. There was a recent study that was published in uh, Multiple Sclerosis Journal looking at exercise in patients with secondary progressive MS. And one of the secondary outcome uh, measures was depression. And they in fact found that exercise did not only increase an individual's physical functioning, it had additional benefits with respect to mood and cognition as well. We decided to adopt a dog, you know, which has been a lot of help in various sense, you know, in the sense that, you know, I have company. I don't feel that alone. I don't feel that depressed. Bonbon is a rescue, but he rescued me. Um, he really helped me a lot uh, to control myself. He's all love. So he only wants to give you love and he wants to receive love. So um, in that sense, it's, it really calms you down. The other good thing about the dog is that he had made me move again because he makes me get up, you know, to feed him. He makes me get up to get him out, you know, to the yard. I think it's sad that my family had to see some of those things and anger that I've portrayed at times. Um, now that I know it's a disease and, and I have a little more recognition of how I'm acting. Honestly, I think the relationship with my wife has gotten much stronger. Someone will say to me, well, like, how's he doing today? And they just want you to say, oh, he's fine. But they don't realize that he's like, he's always going through something. But he's recognized that he just has to take time to take breaks. And if he's feeling stressed or the kids are upsetting him, He's learned just to take, take a step back and be like, okay, I just need to take a couple minutes. So I think it has helped um, just him recognize that sometimes he just needs his space. I'm capable of doing a lot of things still. I can be a dad to my kids, be a husband to my wife and actually be here. I worked hard for a period of time and I, I wish I could work in, until I die because I loved what I do. But now that I can't, I can refocus my passion on my family. They definitely give me a lot of excitement, something to look forward to in the time that I have and, and that I get to spend with them now that I'm home. It's awesome.